Greetings, Chaplain Corps. Today is May the 10th, 2023. On this day, 74 years ago, the United States Air Force established the Air Force Chaplain Corps. So today is the 74th anniversary of our Air Force Chaplain Corps. So, happy anniversary, Chaplain Corps. On behalf of our Department of the Air Force senior leaders, I want to say thank you for your continued outstanding service. We need you more today than ever before. It is with sadness that we remember the recent loss of two of our own active duty regular Air Force chaplains. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families of Chaplain Brigadier General Dan Branningham and Chaplain Colonel Russ Reagan. Anytime we lose a Chaplain Corps member, it is a sad day. While we have lost several members over the last couple of years, it is never easy. I ask you to join me now in remembering them in a moment of silence. As we reflect over the past couple of years, from where have we come? We have been on quite a journey, COVID shutdown and operations, the death of George Floyd, the racial equality assessment team, now diversity and inclusion team, January the 6th, incorporating our support to the United States Space Force, continued COVID operations and vaccinations, withdrawal from Afghanistan, and our welcome to the Afghan allies and families. COVID vaccination mandate with religious accommodation requests, religious resolution teams and appeals, and a very, very long road. The war in Ukraine and the pivot to the Pacific. What a journey. From the Secretary of the Air Force and Department of the Air Force senior leaders, Thank you for handling multiple situations in which you were not prepared, but you stepped up to the challenges and did well in caring for our people. I echo their words. Chief Chambers and I deeply thank you for your continued service, sacrifice, and care for others. Many have asked or are wondering, where are we headed? The simple answer and roadmap is that HCNEX 2.0 is more than a plan, but is our way of life. With our shift and focus moving from spiritual care to religious accommodation and spiritual fitness, coupled with leadership advisement, our vision remains to care for airmen, guardians, and families more than anyone thinks possible. We must emulate servant leadership in our care for our members, our teams, and our families. In HCNEXT 2.0, line of effort number one is to fortify the warfighter and families through religious accommodation of their religious service and spiritual fitness programs and actions. We have traditionally provided those religious Title X responsibilities and should continue. What is new to us is how we organize spiritual fitness training events to prepare the warfighter and their families for tomorrow's war today. Strong Bonds offers multiple training events. Unit engagement is part of spiritual fitness, but bridging our white rope idea to our HOPE initiative worldwide as a force multiplier, HC Sensor, and Frontline Intercession is a game-changing opportunity to better care 
for the warfighter and family. This effort is our bread and butter that commanders at all levels are expecting. We cannot do everything by ourselves, but we need to integrate with other support professionals as part of an integrated resilience that is on the spectrum of resilience. We must work together. I'm asking all MAGCOM and FIELCOM command religious support teams to lead this effort, to validate that at every level we are aligned with the commander's intent and HCNEX 2.0. Our Department of the Air Force leaders are looking to us to do our part in fortifying the warfighter and family. How are you answering your leader's call? It's a great question to reflect. In line of effort number two, to do this well, we must re-image our teams and culture regarding how we onboard and offboard our own 8C folks, how we build a healthy team, how we develop every team member with dignity and respect for all. We must show every team member that we care. We must prepare them for the future. Both our 5RO Religious Affairs Airmen and 52R chaplain career fields are shaping training, education, and development opportunities to better prepare our members for the present and future. This level of care, development, and growth is essential for tomorrow's war today and for our own readiness. As we look at LOE number three, we have discussed repeatedly how we need to rebuild our own HC readiness. And we must do that. We must rebuild our readiness. We must train the way we fight or lead. We must shift our training to respond both at home and abroad, always ready as a total force Chaplain Corps community. We have HC online training available right now. We are developing a Train the Trainer course to train our readiness religious support teams to be trainers. We will develop IG supported HC certification and validation. We need this training now. But we are also exploring additional areas for more readiness training skills such as assist, safe talk, SISM, or critical incident stress management, and moral injury. As we move toward finalizing our Air Force instructions, 52101 and 52104 updates, we are rebuilding our readiness for tomorrow's war today. Anywhere, anytime. While our Chaplain Corps has done an amazing job, we must focus on our adjustment for tomorrow. To do this, we must first look into the mirror and perform our own self-assessment. How are we? How are we doing? Are we receiving honest feedback from others? Are we applying the feedback? Recently, I fielded a repeated question about chaplains that can apply to our religious affairs airmen. The question is, what are you looking for in a senior leader chaplain? Strategic view, critical thinking, future thinking? I answered the question to each person, including three of our own four-star commanding generals. And I would like to answer the question to you that really applies to all chaplains and all religious affairs airmen. I'm looking for someone who is compassionate, humble, selfless, 
a servant leader who cares for airmen, guardians, and families more than anyone thinks possible, and uses their rank, position, or influence for others instead of their own promotion, their own assignment, or their own whatever. In serving others, they adopt the attitude to be kind, be available, be inclusive of all. Be the best form of yourself and be all of this with dignity and respect for all. This is the Chaplain Corps member. We are looking forward to lead our Corps at all levels. We need you to become the compassionate leader of our Corps for tomorrow and help us ready HC for our mission and purpose, to care for airmen, guardians, and families more than anyone thinks possible. While we continue our battle for competing shrinking resources with personnel and funds, we are achieving small victories as we learn to develop the absolute best use of our resources around the globe. Please, advocate your needs through your chain of command. They will then articulate the advocacy for your needs to those above them so that we can clearly capture the needs from the field up. As we continue celebrating 74 years as a Chaplain Corps, we also want to celebrate the 50 years of women in Air Force Chaplaincy. We are thankful for this milestone and are so thankful for the women who have served in our chaplaincy, from Chaplain Major General Lorraine Potter to each one until this present day. The impact that women have had in our chaplaincy and our Department of the Air Force is outstanding. Thank you to each one of you for your service. As a chaplain corps serving our Department of the Air Force, we are reminded that we cannot do this alone. We must collaborate with members and offices across the Department of the Air Force. We must unite as a team together to prepare ourselves, our military, and our families to be ready today for tomorrow's fight. The question is, will you join Chief Chambers and me on this journey? Will you unite with us for a united purpose and greater good for all. Let me say thank you again for all that you do every day and wish you a happy 74th anniversary, Chaplain Corps. Have a wonderful day.